Hello and welcome to this video on simplifying thirds. Now let's first quickly explore what a third is. A third is just a root of a number which cannot be simplified to remove the root. So to give you some examples, if I had the square root of 2, that is a third because it's the root of a number and you can't simplify it to get rid of the root. If I had the cube root of 5, that's still a root, it's a cube root, but it's still a root, that is a third. But if I had, say, the square root of 4, well, that can be simplified to 2, which doesn't have a root, and therefore, root 4 is not a third. Now, there's just two lots of thirds that you need to know which covers the whole of this topic across multiple videos, and it's this. If you have the square root of a number, and you times by the square root of another number, then you can multiply the a and the b together, so it would be the square root of a b. And the other law is if you have a square root of a number and you divide by the square root of another number, you can divide the a by the b. So it's the square root of a and b. So those are the two laws of thirds that we need. And we can use that to simplify thirds. And by that I mean, well, let's say we were simplifying a fraction. I know that 6 eighths we can simplify to 3 over 4. And to simplify in this case means to make the numbers as small as possible. So let's just say we wanted to simplify the square root of 8. What we do is we can use this law here backwards. We've got the square root of something. Is there a way that we could express that 8 as a product of two numbers so I can split it up? Now 8 is 4 times 2, isn't it? So if I write that as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2, then, well, what's the square root of 4? We know the square root of 4 is 2. So it's going to be 2 times the square root of 2. And if I have 2 times the square root of 2, well, if I had, say, 2 times x, we could write that as 2x, couldn't we? So if we have 2 times root 2, we could just write that as 2 root 2. And the key is to finding a square factor of that number there. So in this case, 4 is the largest square factor of 8, and so we can write 8 as that square factor times the other number that makes up 8, and then it nicely simplifies. So identify the largest square factor. Let's do some more examples. We've got b here, the square root of 12. Now, what is the biggest square factor of 12? Is 4 a factor and a square number? Yes, it is. So we could write root 12 as root 4 times root 3. And notice this time I'm not putting the time symbol in between because when you have them next to each other, it just means you times them. And if we put that square number first, that means the square root of 4 we know is 2, so it simplifies to 2 root 3. And that doesn't simplify any further. What about C? The square root of 75 what square numbers do we know that go into 75? Well, 25 is a factor which is a square number. So we could write it as root 25, and 25 times what is 75? Well, it's 3. And then the square root of 25, we can just simplify to 5. So it's 5 root 3. What about the next one? We've got root 300. What's the biggest square number that goes into 300? Well, it's 100, so we could write it as the square root of 100, put the square number first, and 100 times what is 300? Well, it's 3, and then the square root of 100 is just 10, so it's 10 root 3. What about the next one? We've got the square root of 48. What's the biggest square number that goes into 48? Well, it's 16, so we write root 16, and 16 times what is 48? It's 3 again. So that becomes 4 root 3. Now on to these second ones here, the difference here is that we've got a number on front of the third. So what do we do? Well, when we have 3 root 20, that could be written as, well, what's the biggest square number that goes into 20? It's 4. So we could write that as 3 root 4 and 4 times 5 gives 20. So it's 3 root 4 root 5. Now, the square root of 4 is 2, but we're timesing it by the 3. So 3 times 2 is 6, and we get 6 root 5. So if we have two non-thirds, we can just combine them together, like we have here. 3 times 2 is 6. What about the second one? 2 root 27. What's the biggest square factor of 27? Well, it's 9. 
9 times 3 is 27, so we could write it as 2 root 9 root 3. And then, well, the square root of 9 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, so it's 6 root 3. What about C? We got 5 root 8. Well, it, what's the biggest square factor that goes into 8? It's 4, so it's 5 root 4, and 4 times 2 is 8, so it's root 4 root 2. The square root of 4 is 2, 2 times 5 is 10, so it's 10 root 2. And then D, 6 root 40. What, what's the biggest square factor of 40? Well, it's 4, so we can write as 6 root 4 root 10. Now the square root of 4 is 2, and 2 times 6 is 12, so it's 12 root 10. And by the way, you might think, well, can we simplify root 10 any further? It has factors, like 2, for example, and 5. But the thing is, is that it doesn't have any square factors anymore, other than 1, but that's not going to help us. So we could write root 10 as root 2, root 5, but that's not really any simpler. I think having just a single third is simpler than having two thirds. So root 10 is the simplest we can get it, because there's no square factors that it has other than 1. Now, finally, you have to do the reverse sometimes. And I've seen this more in IGCC papers rather than GCC papers. But we want to write the following in the form root A. So just a single square root with nothing on front of it. So if we have 5 root 2, we want to write that as a single third. Now, we basically work backwards. 5 is the square root of what? Well, it's the square root of 25. So we could write this as a square root of 25 times the square root of 2. But from our laws of thirds before, if we have a square root of a number times the square root of a number, we can just times those together. So 25 times 2 is 50. So it's the square root of 50. And we've written it as a single third without a number in front of it. What about b? We've got 9 root 2. Well, 9 is the square root of 81, so we can write it as root 81 root 2, and then 81 times 2 is 162, so it's a root 162. What about C? We've got 4 root 3. Well, 4 can be written as the square root of 16, so it's the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, and 16 times 3 is 48, so it's the square root of 48. So you can see this is basically just a reverse process of simplifying a set, so it's like reverse simplifying. And then finally, D, we've got C root D. It's algebraic, but so what? We use exactly the same principle. C could be written as the square root of what? Well, it's the square root of C squared. And then we still times it by root D. And that means we can times those two together. C squared times D is C squared D. So it's the square root of C squared D.